everybody, Caitlin from Pared Down, how are you? Um, if you're just finding my channel for the first time, welcome. I blog, vlog, and Instagram about living zero waste. I am a mom of two small children. We have a large dog and I have a husband. And we're a pretty typical Canadian family who puts nothing to curbside. Uh, we collect our trash in, well, what was for 2016-17, we go Earth Day to Earth Day with our trash jar, um, was a four liter jar. And yeah, the reason that I share my lifestyle on YouTube and on my blog and Instagram is that I want to show that it's not that difficult to make a dramatic change in terms of your carbon footprint and the amount of, you know, stuff that you send to landfill. Uh, yeah, so today's video is about other people's trash. Um, in the beginning, back in 2014, I had the philosophy when starting out on our zero waste journey that, you know, my house is a temple, it's a trash free temple, and that any trash recycling whatsoever that came through that door was my responsibility to dispose of, and therefore it had to go in my trash jar. And I've changed, completely changed my philosophy. My philosophy was also that when we were outside the home, that any trash that we made, we had to take responsibility for. And I've changed my opinion and outlook on both. And I wanna share that with you because I think it could be a game changer for a lot of people. And I think it's a really positive game changer. I'm not passing the buck, I'm not, um, letting myself off the hook in any way. I am actually just changing how I view living this lifestyle out loud and I think it's in a way that actually allows for more people to feel as though they can maybe live this lifestyle themselves or feel more at ease about being curious and asking questions. So, back to the beginning. January 2014, um, I was always trying to find ways to reduce my waste or I was very concerned about the environment, but the light bulb for me never turned on until I watched a video on Bea Johnson and she is the zero waste pioneer. Um, and so I went out and I bought her book and I was watching all these videos I could find on her and I basically adopted every single thing that she did and without really even questioning how it would apply to my life. And she does not allow any waste to come into her home. And I very much applaud her for this. I think that she is awesome but that is something that doesn't work for me and it doesn't work for my family and I think that well for us I think my way is better so there you go there yeah. just kidding um, <laughs> um, so yeah so in the beginning I think that it created a lot of stress for me and it created a lot of stress for those people in my life that I love and you know I think that having that attitude also, it sort of doesn't allow, or it sort of contradicts the reason why a lot of people adopt these lifestyles of voluntary simplicity. I think for a lot of people, one of the key reasons to adopting zero waste is obviously environmental impact and reducing our individual footprints and doing what we can as individuals to be a part of the solution. So yes, that is very much one of the reasons why uh, people live zero waste. Another big reason though I think people live zero waste is to adopt a, a more minimal lifestyle, um, a lifestyle of voluntary simplicity that is all-encompassing and we do this to sort of be able to just turn down the chaos and the chatter and the rat race that is life and to be able to, you know, enjoy the finer things and I don't mean caviar and champagne, I mean quiet time with friends and family and you know, our children as they're growing up to enjoy nature. And I think when we start imposing strict rules around how we spend our time with our friends and family, um, that it reduces the ability to enjoy. Um, 
And this is why. We live in a, you know, a capitalist, consumer-based society where, you know, I find the biggest struggle to living zero waste is always remembering I don't need to do it that way anymore. I'm choosing it to do my way. And so for me, somebody who's been living zero waste now for three and a half years almost, that is still my number one struggle is to remind myself that I don't need to, to buy into the chatter that, you know, to, to, to remember to stay aware because it's easy to watch a commercial or hear an ad and you think that sounds pretty good. And y you know, you're, you're almost sucked into buying it. And I'll be totally honest, I've got a number of friends who sell stuff on on um, social media, on Facebook. They're a part of these companies. And there's this one for skin cream and all these before and after pictures. And I'm so tempted and I have to remind myself, like, do you really need that? You know, and I that that is the biggest struggle. So for somebody who has, you know, wholeheartedly bought in to the philosophy of this lifestyle, I still struggle. So of course my extended family and friends and teachers and you know the people that are on the outer circles of my life that know that I live this way, you know, but, but don't live this way themselves, they're going to struggle. And so is it appropriate for me to throw it back in their face when they you know, make a mistake. Um, in the beginning, I thought, yes. I didn't look at it as though throwing it, that, that I was throwing it back in their face. I looked at it more as I was gently reminding them. So, um, yeah, so if people came over to our house, they had to bring their recycling and garbage home with them. And, you know, my original thought process was that simply by bringing their garbage and recycling home with them that they were going to have to spend more time thinking about it um, about you know how we only use these items for such a brief moment but oftentimes then they're in existence forever but yeah I don't I don't do that anymore you know I still have a garbage can I don't use it like a municipal big garbage can outside and I still have a recycling bin which we do use and why am I going to deny those things to other people um, so yeah I think that it causes stress for people because they're trying to figure out how to participate in celebrations how to participate in in um, you know dinners uh, because often with family and friends we do you know sort of a potluck or you bring a salad or you bring this or you bring that and people are nervous about well how do I bring that to their house and it causes stress for them they can't just they can't just come and enjoy and so yeah I've totally changed my philosophy on that and it was my brother-in-law that you know sort of caused me to pause and think and it was when he was coming to spend a week with us over the summer and he'd never been been in our home before he's a new member of the family um, him and his son and they they live very different than we do and he was brave enough to tell me how nervous he was to come into our house. He was scared that he was going to make a mistake, um, that I wasn't going to be okay with him being him. And I realized in that moment that what a shame that would be, you know, if, you know, that was how everybody felt, that they didn't feel or that they were more focused on whether or not I was going to be upset with them or shame them or make them feel bad or that they were going to be more focused on how not to make a mistake around Caitlin than to just simply be and enjoy. So it was in that moment that I realized that his company and him feeling free and welcome to come into my home was more important than if he was to show up with a bag of chips and you know lemons come in those mesh packaging um, and it's more important because I've chosen to live this lifestyle to allow for our family to have more family time and it's more important because 
if he's to come into my home and spend time with us, he's going to be immersed in how we live our life. And, you know, chances of him, you know, witnessing how we live and perhaps recognizing ways in which he might be able to change are more they're more likely to happen if he's welcome in my home as himself and where he's relaxed and where you know he's there if he doesn't feel welcome if he feels nervous then chances are you know they're not going to come as often and or when they're there they're not going to be relaxed they're going to be on edge and yeah feeling as though they're always worried about their next step and you know how they're supposed to be in my home and that's not what I want at all that was never my intention and so I'm very grateful that he had the guts to tell me that he was nervous because it's absolutely changed how I view um, this lifestyle. I think too often lifestyles that tend to be viewed as fringe lifestyles, which zero waste very much is at this point, um, are viewed as very different and there's barriers that people put up. There's stories that people tell themselves as to why they can't live that way and so if we're able to welcome people into our homes into our lives into our way of being and to not talk about zero waste to not focus on zero waste to not make them feel guilt or shame or anything about how they are participating in our lives they are much more likely to um, be open to perhaps receiving some insights about how zero waste may be able to become a part of their life simply by watching and being around us. Um, I'm a big believer in the philosophy of lead by example um, and so I think that perhaps I wasn't doing that wholeheartedly before and that is how I plan to approach things from now on. Um, my immediate family, my mom comes over, she was just here for the weekend watching our children and she brings a lot of waste in, into our home and I just don't take responsibility for it anymore. Um, if she buys cucumbers wrapped in plastic, um, I don't feel that that is my plastic because I wouldn't have purchased it and um, so it's not mine and she is very good about for the most part bringing uh, what is waste at the end of her trip home with her and I tell her like it's okay mom you don't have to do that but she still does and I'm grateful that she does do that um, but whatever is left over um, I simply don't take responsibility for it so yeah that's how I deal with it in my home outside of my home um, I still take responsibility for waste um, if I create it. So if we go to a restaurant and I forget to say no straw and they bring a straw, I do my absolute best to remember to bring that straw home with me and recycle it. However, or often straws aren't recyclable so they go into, in my waste jar. However, if I specifically request no straw um, or you know whatever, no this or no that, and it comes anyways I don't feel the need to take responsibility for it because I did my due diligence. Um, and when it comes to family and friends, I used to feel an immense amount of stress about um, sticking to zero waste when I was staying at family and friends homes because oftentimes the way that we show our gratitude is we will buy you know the groceries while we're there. Um, but usually we're going, I'm usually going with my sister-in-law or with my mother-in-law to buy groceries and so we're going to the shops that they know. And so do I impose my will on them? Do I impose my lifestyle on them? Or, you know, am I gracious and simply do what I can? And in the beginning I used to feel a lot of stress uh, around it or I felt guilty if I was paying for groceries that came in packaging because then I just yeah and now I don't when I go to somebody else's house I try and live by their rules 
Just like when somebody comes to my house, I'm sure that they try and live by my rules. Um, it's just hospitality, I think. And when I do go grocery shopping, I absolutely bring my reusable produce bags and I will try and use buy bulk or try and buy loose veggies using my bags whenever I can. Um, but I am certainly not going to impose my way of being on somebody else in their home. I simply do not see that as hospitable or welcoming or grateful or any of those things. And I actually think that those attitudes and ways of moving through the world actually alienate people from you and the lifestyle that you're trying to promote more than welcoming people to feel as though they can participate in any small way that they can. And at the end of the day, we're trying to get more people adopting any aspect of zero waste. Um, you know, I, I very much think that it's more important to have 75% of the population doing 25% better than 25% of the population doing 75% better. Like, because at the end of the day, you know, the health of the planet is what's important. So any strides, big or small, is what is important. It's not about perfection. It's not about being all or nothing. Um, it's not about any of that. And it's not about competition or, or shame or any of those things. It's about just always being open to doing better wherever we can. And so, yeah, that is my video today on other people's trash, how I used to approach other people's trash, and how I approach other people's trash today. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel below if you want to see more videos like this. Leave me a comment in the comment section if there's a video that you would like me to do. Um, I try and do a new video every other week. Um, and yeah, so 